Good morning, everybody. We're live. <laughs> Hello. Hey, we made it. Uh, welcome to Astrology and Coffee with uh, Julian L. And today we are doing our elements and we're working on our fire signs. Um, and before we get started, I want to make a couple of announcements. Um, as Wait, we just are... a second. Sorry. You're good. I'm just watching. Okay. You can start. There was just a delay before okay. I started. Um, okay, so a couple of things. Um, if you are watching this live, we are trying to build our YouTube uh, platform. So if you can just like and subscribe, and this helps us um, as we're building this platform up. Um, and then our upcoming events, we have a new moon this Sunday at Fitz Park in Salt Lake City. Um, this Sunday, the 16th at 2 p.m. Um, and there's a link on the side Megan has posted for um, events um, and there's a Facebook thing and just casual everyone's invited all ages and uh, yeah that's it and then next Thursday we'll be working on the element of earth um, at 9 a.m. on Thursday and then also we are looking for teachers and volunteers anybody that wants to live stream with us and anything to contribute to the community just send uh, one of us a message and we'd be happy to chat with you. And then Megan's going to talk to us a little bit about the Patreon. Yeah, so we're currently working on building a Patreon. Um, if you want to join, we have kind of a rough draft of what we are going to be offering to our Patreons. Um, and you're welcome to join and show us some love and give us some support. Uh, and then we'll just kind of be flushing that out a little bit more. So if you want to wait to donate to the Patreon, you can um, follow it. If you go to Patreon, there's a link in one of the comments. Uh, the pinned comment is our link in bio. So it's got the Patreon there. And you can just choose to follow our uh, the Academy, and we'll be posting updates as well as more information about the Patreon offerings over on Patreon. Yay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Take it away, Elle. <laughs> All One right. second, sorry. I made this cute little intro, so I'm going to play mm -hmm. the intro, and then let's start the class. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. All right, guys, so this week we're going over fire, and if any of you know or have dealt with any little fire signs in your life, you know that they're very exciting, very fun. I always say they can either light up a city or they can burn it to the ground, just depending on how you handle them. <laughs> so, Fire is all about action. So a lot of times you'll see that um, anyone with a fire sun rising, a lot of times if they have it, a fire sign in their um, Mars, they're very action oriented. They're very, you know, quick to be the one to start the job and make sure that it gets completed. So that's kind of one of the good qualities that fire has is they start things, they get things going and they make sure that it's finished. So lots of energy um <laughs> in western astrology there are three fire signs so you have aries leo and sagittarius and um those are different they have different elements that kind of bring each one their special talents aries is kind of you know the start of the season it's the sign that um it's a cardinal sign so it, it likes to begin things likes to start things um kind of like the fire starters way, the way I think of it when I think of like the starter like Aries is the fire starter um they initiate things they can be very temperamental so a lot of times this the sign can be you know really good but a short fuse so it's the god of war tread with caution <laughs> with caution yes so and then you have Leo it's kind of the middle in the middle it's a uh fixed sign so a lot of times when you have a fire leo sign personality they tend to um give the fire its strength they're pretty sturdy they are very consistent very loyal just a good ah, very loyal. You know, a good 
sign to have in your chart because Leos are very loyal and they, they're very consistent. And then lastly, you have Sagittarius. It's a mutable sign. They complete tasks. This is kind of what spreads the fires. Sagittarius is very fast. It's very, um, they always have their hands and all the things. There's always like something that they're doing or starting or they're just all over the place in a good way. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, this one is just, they like to travel. It's hard to them. They're kind of wild. They're kind of the wild card. Aries can be a little bit of a wild card too, but I find that Sagittarius are the more of the free of the fire signs. Yeah, um, I agree. Did you want to touch on any any of that? Um, with just three signs that are. Yes, it was actually funny because we right before we pressed live, we all found out that all three of us have a different rising sign. That's a different um, fire sign. So we are covering all bases this morning with our risings. Um, I'm being the the Leo rising and uh, L's uh, Sagittarius rising. Yep. And Megan Aries rising. So we've covered all bases this morning, just bringing you guys a full fledged fire <laughs> account. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fiery. But we all have our sun signs and like a more peace. So it's kind of hard to, when yeah. you have, when you have fire, it shows, but then like you see certain things, like I'll meet someone that'll have a ton of fire in their chart. And I'm like, man, you've got to be the most fiery person and I'll like hang out with them for a little bit and then they'll be so like mellow and I'm like what is going on and a lot of times you'll find that and we're not going into aspects right now but the way that the fire flows if it all kind of like trines you know each sign you find that you like are just so calm these fiery people are so calm and so it kind of brings down the yeah fire. it really depends what where other things are in your chart like I'm a Capricorn regular like sun and so that it really balances out that fire sign and I'm pretty even keeled <clears throat> until I'm like triggered in something and then I, you're like oh okay there's the fire but I also yeah. have stellium and Sagittarius so um I got a little bit of that little fiery in there still too I'm feisty mm -hmm. yeah it's <laughs> your Mars is your Mars Sagittarius I have to look I actually can't think of what my Mars is off the top of my head coffee hasn't kicked in hasn't kicked in. It's still early. We're still we're still young. The day, the morning's still young. Yeah, and we've got yeah. this little rainy weather too, so it's kind of like a slow, slow morning. Good day for coffee and astrology. Yeah, stay home. What's next? Yes. Yes. Go the opposite of a fire sign. <laughs> <laughs> the opposite. Fire signs out there splashing in puddles, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> causing world yeah in a good way like if i'm getting in a fight i want the fire signs on my side to be perfectly honest or if i'm like building a cause i want those fire signs because they're the best cheerleaders too yes like, well and the other good thing about especially if somebody had like a fire in their mercury they're so brutally honest which some sensitive souls that may not be the best thing but for me personally i love to know where i stand with people so i want to know are you mad? Why are you mad? How do we fix it? And they're very good at like, this made me mad. It may be rude. Yeah. <laughs> act in there. But that's, you know, I mean, for me, at least I know where I stand with them. So I can appreciate yeah. that. It doesn't always come with a filter. <laughs> yes. Well, and then that's just the three fire signs. I mean, to kind of go into more of like fire, the elements of it, you know, like I said, action, passion, loyalty, um, <clears throat> a lot of fire in your chart can make you one of those people that, you know, really possess those qualities that very loyal. I, I keep going back to Leo for loyalty <clears throat> because I truly don't know a more loyal sign in the fire realm that just has this undeniable loyalty to their friends, to their family. I've like, I've had assistants that were Leos and they were just like, oh, they were so good and great when it comes to loyalty. So that's just, and I'm Sagittarius and Aries possess those qualities as well, but yeah. uh, definitely, definitely some Leo energy there. Yeah. Uh, my, my inner circle is all like pretty fire signs and they are all like loyal to a fault at some point. <laughs> but yeah, yeah I, I always imagine like Leos and their pride and you can always see just like, you know, they're attached and that's how they vibe is in that like loyal, loyal pride. And so, yeah, love that yeah. part about the Leo. Leo's get a lot of 
bad rap for being narcissistic and the center <laughs> of attention, but they also come with really great qualities as well. Right. Yeah, absolutely. There's no and bad sign. No, 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 no. It's just how evolved are you? Yeah, <laughs> what, exactly. Yeah. I'm and looking at that. Oh, <laughs> Excuse me. No, I was just going to say what a lot of fire signs get this like wild and crazy rap, which I mean, I truly believe like in their younger days they are. But I've found more couples to stay married throughout those fire signs. Like they, they kind of go through a lot of BS together, I feel like, because they are both kind of constantly doing things that, you know, may question things, but they are still, they still stay loyal and they stay married. Like if you look at fire signs, longevity of marriage, it's a lot lengthier than, than I would have thought. I'm like, that's pretty interesting because they stay loyal and they work through the BS and they just push through. So a cool study to do to see like which signs, you know, last the the longest or stick yeah. to things. That's interesting. I am telling you. Air, I'm funny. we we came in last, but you know what? We we, we still stay friends. So it's fine. <laughs> last but not least. Yes. It's not that's neither here nor there. But you no, know, the air signs they come in last. And surprisingly water was the second. So I thought it would have been earth, but it was not. It was water. Emotional attachments, I guess, are hard to break. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that. <laughs> I can relate to that. Yeah. So that's just kind of like a fun little study for marriage and fire signs because I, I wouldn't have guessed that. It was some research that I did. The other thing is the Berkman color descriptions. I noticed this early on when I first started college. They had us take the – and I'm, like, old, right? So it's, like, these were, like, way before like they came out with them well they probably were there like the Myers whatever but we just yeah. did the, the Berkman and so it they assigned us a color based on our personality mm -hmm. I was always I think it's blue but if you look at all of the colors like red energetic fiery you know fierce whatever and then blue kind of more intellectually we think with our minds not so much with our hearts green was like um, very um, practical by the book, likes organized. And then yellow was like emotional. They react emotionally, very intuitive. So I was like, these are all the elements. Like I literally remember thinking that. And Isn't it I, how it works? Yeah, and I was like, and I, you know, mentioned that and the teacher was like, yeah, astrology, whatever. This is like 2007 lady, like nobody cares about astrology, <laughs> witchy, whatever you've got going on. But it really did align. And it was kind of cool to see that like, those studies and how they kind of like correlated with yeah oh, that is super i immediately was like i'm green <laughs> like i'm practical logical <laughs> and i'm like so earth sign <laughs> yeah <laughs> or right there your son so yeah that was that was really cool um obviously fire signs have like the most energy of all the signs i mean they mm -hmm. are the, like if you are a water sign and you're like well i have a lot of energy you should really look at your chart and see where your rising is your Mars, because a lot of times Mars is go, go, go. That's your action. That's how you react to things. So um, that there could be some fire there. Also, look at your houses. We're not going over houses today, but I mean, I did kind of want to touch on like the fire signs. They're very beneficial in houses. So in astrology, there's 12 houses. Each house represents the sign. The first house would be Aries. It's kind of the starter of the zodiac. And the fifth house is Leo. And then we have the ninth house, which is Sagittarius. So anytime there is a fire sign in that house, it, it, it exalts it like louder, stronger, um, gives it more personality. So if you're an Aries sun and your sun is in the first house, you're probably very fiery. Yeah. You're Leo and your sun is in the fifth house. You're probably one of the most creative artistic people, you know, ever. And then your ninth, um house if there's Sagittarius in there you'd probably a gypsy that travels I mean that's or or a philosopher that can't stop learning like you're obsessed with learning so those are kind of the houses that really are really pushing for the that fiery energy yeah and also taking a look at your stelliums if you have three or more signs in a house or in a um... Uh, in a house or um, or a sign that's also like a big focus point to like take a notes of so like I'm very earth sign but I and then I got my three um, 
three signs in a stellium. I always forget like the the verbiage for it. Um, but yeah, it's Sagittarius. And then so I have all of that, like the needing to learn constantly, the travel, all of that. So it really just balances it out. But it's such a bigger focal point when you have three all in that one small section. Yeah. It's loud. It's loud. Do you know what house it's in? Um, I should just pull it up since we're <laughs> like, here. I should have probably had it sitting here already. And if anyone's watching and you don't know what your signs are, um, astro.com is such a great resource um, for looking at your actual chart. And then Cafe Astrology does a beautiful uh, birth chart layout. Let's see. I am at, would you ask me my Mars? Yeah, your Mars was, I just, what that Mars was earlier. is Aquarius. Is what, Aquarius? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'm a little a bit of an alien. Oh, you're cutting out a little bit. Maybe it's my connection. There, you're back on my end. Are you good? I'm good. Yeah. Perfect. We're getting a little Mercury retrograde energy. Yeah, we're not too far out. We have, we're almost there. A couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is your, do you know what your house, your stellium is in now, the Sagittarius? Oh, yeah. My stellium is in the sixth house. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. So it's still, you still have that strong energy, but it's more for like doing for others, starting a school, teaching people. Yeah. You want to, teach and you know, that's kind of a, a house for serving others, the sixth house. So yeah. that's. That's a good one though. That's a, I always, when I see that, I always think, oh, you're, you're going to take care of your parents when you get older. Anytime I see <laughs> any placements in there for a lot of signs, cause that's, that kind of indicates that. So yeah. totally yeah. off topic. Another week we will go over all the houses, stelliums and all that, but Stick back to them. our fire. <laughs> um, so just to kind of go into a little bit about the houses the first house has to do with self. And so anytime you have any planets or a lot of planets or um, just anything going on in your first house, it is reflecting yourself. So, cause Aries is about self. And so when you think of polarities, you have Aries and you have Libra, Aries is self, Libra is partnership. So it's kind of like, just kind of think about Aries energy when you see first house, when you see anything in the first house, when you see anything in the fifth house, it indicates creativity. It is, you know, children resides here. So my moon is in Taurus in the fifth house and I have a lot of children. And so, and you know, it's just one of those things. Hers <laughs> is very similar. Fifth house moon placement can sometimes indicate a lot of children, um, but it also indicates creativity and loyalty and just kind of fun. This is like, the energy of like new dating, like when you start a new relationship, this is kind of that fun energy. This this placement you feed off of that. Where some people are like, oh, I'm dating someone for the first time. We're going through this phase. It's really annoying. They probably don't have a lot of fifth house planets. They're probably you see some people that are like, oh my god, I met the love of my life, and it's like the second one in two weeks, and you're like, okay, calm down. <laughs> you just met them, so. That's kind of the difference there between like the fifth house versus like if you look at like other houses that are like marriage, like the seventh house, like those are committed. This is not, this is more fun and free Leo, but loyal, but fun and creative and free. Hmm. What's the ninth house? Again, travel, philosophy. Um, I'm just trying to see my notes here. Anytime you have a lot of, a lot of planets in your, uh, ninth house, you love to learn, you love to travel, you love to learn, like traveling is part of traveling is an experience. And each time you travel, you experience something and you learn something, you gain something from it. It's not just for pleasure. There's a learning sure you can relate to that and definitely speak on that because you were a traveling gypsy. <laughs> yeah, which actually in my, I don't have anything in my ninth house. Oh, nice. I know. Weird. <laughs> mm -hmm. At all. Having the Sagittarius still in there, though, too. Yeah, it really, you can just see the whole different shift in that one. Yeah. And in, in looking at the aspects, too, could be a lot. I mean, I'd have to look at your chart to really know, but a lot of times the aspects can just really push you into like 
foreign lands or small travel, close travels, but yeah, it's cool to see which aspects really indicate where you're going to go with the placements in your chart. Yeah. It's a, that's like the stuff we're learning in school this, uh, this week. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's so much it's like a whole different world in the astrology part. So mm -hmm. much to learn. Yes. Aspects are very, they're, they're so fun to learn. And once you get them down, I get caught up on some of them, the further out ones, like the, you know, the Pluto and, Sometimes your north node will kind of have this weird aspect with something that I'm like, ah, oh, but it's, they're fun to learn. So, yeah. but going through here, I kind of, I mean, that was a lot of my notes on fire and um, I didn't wanted to see if anyone had any comments or, cause I think they just like threw down here. Both your kids are fire, never a dull moment. That is very true. Fire what signs are they, Tyler? If you're here. He's like, hi, good morning. Mm -hmm. Hello. Poor thing. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> exactly. I would be having kids that would be both <laughs> fire signs too, because I like I'm, my mornings are slow oh, and I like no. ease in, and then the universe would be like, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> you're getting fire signs. <laughs> yeah. I have two ones that are so chill and we're just vibing. And then I got a Gemini. And I was like, oh, nonstop. <laughs> yeah, Gemini's Gemini a lot of energy. She has a Scorpio moon, though. So she's really dope because she's like free and fun, but she's also like Tim Burton. Like, <laughs> she is very like dark. And I'm just like, sometimes she says things and I'm just Scorpio. like, <laughs> on a screen mask she's like three and she's like look mom it's me santa i'm like oh. <laughs> <laughs> never a dull day never a dull day no. i was like it's scorpio moon this poor child is she's poor line we used to watch it all day long like she was obsessed with it that's one of my favorite things as soon as one of my friends has a baby like they'll I'll be like one of her, the first people they message. They're like, here's the birth time. And I'm like, yes, let's do your chart. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you're in for a treat or wow. Okay. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> I can already see this. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I have a Sagittarius with an Aries moon kid. Oh, this wow. Such, he is like Ferdinand and the bull. He is like the sweetest. He's like a big, like he's big, he's bulky. You know, he's like the biggest kid on his t-ball team right now. And he, but he is such a soft heart and he's so sweet. Like the trine that I'm telling you that fire and fire, when they really mesh and there's like an understanding of self and how you feel when you have those two fire placements, they kind of come together and they make it like mm. uh, beautiful. So that's cool. Yeah, I think honestly, in the grand scheme of things, like we've got all of the elements, but coming back into, we want to find a balance between all four elements. And so um, looking at your chart, you can be like, oh, wow, I don't have any water. I don't have any fire, but kind of coming back into um, fire. One of the things that I've been like working on a lot this week is um, the missing element. So if you don't have like any fire in your chart, there's so many cool exercises that you can do to kind of activate that to find that balance in your life. Sorry, I was reading your comment. <laughs> I need this coffee to kick in. <laughs> do you want to go over, um, do you want to speak on like when your chart is missing an element and what that? Yeah, um, I just had this, um, I'm kind of pulling from this book. Um, it's going to be, oh no, it's, I was like, is it going to be straight? The Missing Element uh, by Deborah Silverman. And it's actually a great book. It's, it's pretty, it's not extensive, but it kind of goes through, um, helps you find that balance that like we're all craving and we're all needing. And so some of the cool um, strengths, <clears throat> excuse me, the strengths of the fire signs um, that we've already kind of spoke on a little bit was um, the ability to be general, excuse me, the ability to be generously, uh, be a catalyst and an inspiration for change, a lot of life force, natural charisma that inspires others to listen and follow and a knack for attracting people and circumstances that like, they're just such people, people, like people, people, <laughs> if that's the way to say it, um, fearless courage and energy that doesn't really stop, um, magnetic force of feel that attracts 
exactly what is needed in the nick of time. And then the gift of intuition, which um, I find like a lot of like um, fire signs that, that I've experienced anyway have a really big sense of knowing things. They just know. My One of my girls is my favorite. We'll be out and she's like, I, like my spidey senses are telling me it's time to go home. And she always goes home before something bad happens. And it's almost every time. So I made a pact a few years ago. Anytime I see her leaving, I have to go with her because like I'm out. Yeah. I was like, take notes, <laughs> follow your fire signs. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And I love that you mentioned that because a lot of, I feel like when you're looking up fire signs and you're looking at the element of fire, it doesn't really touch on intuition. It doesn't say mm -hmm. this is very intuitive element or sign and I think they get kind of discredited a lot because I, I agree with you I, I think a lot <clears throat> I think like if I think of a Sagittarius their fire it's kind of like maybe they're just having too much fun and they don't want to leave the party and they don't tap into yeah. it but I would say Leo and Aries very in tune with things like their intuition or just like environmental things that are about to happen or you yeah. know I don't it's kind of this, I agree with you. There's a sense of like intuition that they don't really get credit for. And I think they don't get that much credit for it either because they're so fun and playful and high energy that people don't really take that like serious side of them to like heart yeah. because they're just like, oh, whatever. They're always like playing and doing whatever, but they're actually like pretty intuitive people. They need to be listened to. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, the other the other side of an unbalanced um, fire sign of like the shadows of the fire sign is um, deception. They can rationalize anything, tend to embellish or exaggerate. Um, they're competitive without heart, so they could just pummel through and just forget about the people around them. Um, they can have well, big. They you know, win. Yeah, <laughs> they could be pretty self centered and know it all, and then um, very independent to a fault. Um, self-reliant, self-indulgent, anger issues, violent outbursts and rage. Um, they hate details and often do not finish what they start. Impatient with others who can't keep up. Getting in trouble in the past can lead to fears of getting caught. Self-importance and pride and unable to censor or be discriminatory with communication. So that's an unhealed shadow versions of some aspects of the fire signs. So when you're like, I cannot stand Aries or Leo, Aquarius, you've dealt with an unevolved element of that person and maybe check back in with them in 10, five to 10 years and maybe they've evolved, hopefully. Hopefully they've evolved. Yeah. If not, then count Bye. your blessings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Count your blessings. <laughs> yeah, Bye. but for real though, and that's it, it. You just really want to see the balance between both sides. Every single element has its positives and its negatives. So yeah, finding that balance is key. Um, and that's kind of like if you don't have any of that fire in your chart and you kind of want to tap into it, um, there's some little exercises that you can do to kind of activate that fire energy inside of you. <clears throat> um, I kind of actually really enjoyed this one section where she she wrote out some permissions for fire. Um and I'm just going to read a couple of them out loud. I won't read them all. But um, I can use my off button and I know when to stop, which is like a really beautiful permission because I have that problem too sometimes. I'm like just going, going, going. I'm like, okay, it's okay not to <laughs> be the center of attention. Um, <laughs> I love change and can let my soul shine bright and enjoy it. I think that's just beautiful. I am open to commitment. Um, I have the courage to be disruptive and not get in trouble. <laughs> And not caught. <laughs> you right. better be good at it, fire signs. Um, I will communicate with an open <laughs> heart, which is just also those are that heart-centered space. You always want to come back to that to be making sure that you're in that balance between both aspects of coming back to your heart center before you communicate, before you do any of your activities. Um, I know when to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Learning how to say I'm sorry, I was wrong. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Everyone's favorite. <laughs> Do you feel called out right now? A little bit. That's, they're like, you should read this. <laughs> <laughs> There's like tabs on the pages, like specifically for you. <laughs> yeah. Who highlighted these? <laughs> it is. 
Um, one of the good exercises in here is um, the quickest way to fire up the body when there's depression or lethargy is go slow and don't be discouraged. It may take some time, but once the regimen is in place, it's must, much easier to sustain health. You must exercise for your well-being. So yeah, movement for a fire sign is what kind of starts activating that and that getting you into that um, that energy. You know, we all need to call that energy in sometimes. I literally have perfumes for each zodiac, and I'm like, today I'm calling in Scorpio energy, or today I need some little Leo. And so literally, I start with the smell to activate whatever sign I need to call in for that day. I love that. I didn't even know there. I do all things astrology, and I didn't even know. Oh my gosh! But Highly recommend checking out Intuitive Essence. Okay, I yeah. totally love that. Yeah, she does like a sampler pack even, so you can get all twelve like small ones. They're really great <laughs> and all natural. That is so amazing. I love that. Yeah, I hear stuff. They have hair for the. I think it's. I actually think it's elements like for fire, mm. for like it making it big and loud and then for like earth it's like sleek it's like this glot and the smells to it too they're like earthy spicy air was like something wavy like airy i forget the company oh you gotta but, tell me i need to know i'm all about I, the grooming yeah i went to a barber show and they were like here all the elements and i was like astrology and hair you know like i like blocked to it i couldn't get it fast enough like, yeah so i'll have to find it i'll send it maybe in some notes and that way everyone can check it out because it was a really cool. That is super cool. Get some volume in your hair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love all of that. We were also laughing too because I was like trying to rush to get in here and I'm like looked in the mirror and I'm like, oh, my Leo rising. We have to brush my hair because it's not a podcast. We're going to be on video. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of grooming needs to take place this morning. <laughs> I did not brush mine, but, you know, it's fine. My Sagittarius rising. I'm also a Libra, so my Libra's like, meh. I should be more vain, but I'm not. not that <laughs> but <Yeah>. I should. <laughs> yeah. You got a lot going on. You just had a baby, also, which yeah. like that's insane in itself. Yes, she's a month old. She's a cutie. She has an Aries Venus. Ooh, Aries Venus. Okay, you're gonna have your hands full with that. I know. She's a Pisces and a Cancer moon, so I don't know. I'm going to have to really do some aspect checking in her chart and just kind of, but yeah, she's got some fire in there, a lot of Aquarius. I'm just like, what? Wow. Yeah, I'm curious to see how that goes. What's yeah. your Venus? My Venus, I Virgo, I have a Virgo stellium. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like that makes yeah. me feel safe. <laughs> yes, I got you. I Horrible, <laughs> horrible in relationships before. Younger, younger days, but yeah, Virgo, Venus, Virgo, Mars, Virgo, Jupiter, like all of it. It's all Virgo. Oh. Taurus, wow. moon, thank goodness. I kind of like, I'm great. I'm the most grateful for like an earth moon to like really balance me and kind of like, because Libra, Sagittarius, I mean, I can be crazy. So <laughs> we all can, right? But that's just like unhealed parts of your charts. We can all be crazy. <laughs> yes. I mean, honestly, the only fire I have in my chart. So my chart is unbalanced. The only fire that I have is my Sagittarius. Wow. Right? Yeah. So wow. when I'm lacking fire, since there's, I can kind of touch on this, I can tell you, I can be very, like, I'm very protective and defensive. But as far as, like, I'm not really chill. I'm, like, so flatlined, like, the world could be exploding behind me and I would be like, okay, let's think of a practical way on how it's life, like everyone's about to die, but let's like at least think about how we can like handle this for the time being. You know, like there's no yeah. like, like I've been told so many times at jobs, they're like, your lack of like enthusiasm sometimes seems like you don't care. And that is a lacking of fire in my chart because fire, like we express things. So over the years I've tried to, I've tried to like level that unbalance out by acting a little more upset about something than I really am because I, I don't want people to think that I don't care. It's not that I don't care. I really don't have that fiery personality, but I've been called out so many times for not caring yeah. when I handle it differently. I handle it in a very practical way. And so I do the same way. Yeah. So when you're lacking fire in your chart, that could be one thing. Like people can say, "Oh, you're too chill. You're too laid back." Like I get told, my head's in the clouds, 
way too much. And it's like, no, I really, I'm here. I just don't react, react. Yeah. My, I like to sit and process and think about it, you know, very and, and then if you have on the offset of that, if you have so much fire in your chart that you're reacting to everything, like someone looks at you and you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe try to channel some different energy because you know, it, that's what happens when you have so much fire. If you feel it, you're passionate, you know, that's everything fire is. It's in you, it lives in you. And so reacting to things sometimes is like, you have to kind of find a balance. You have to, you have to evolve out of those characteristics because if you don't, I mean, you can, you can go through life reacting and you can go through life, you know, being that hot head and being that passionate and being that crazy person. But it really like, I, I've seen a lot of heart problems with fire, mm. you know, this, the very stress, true. you know, they, they, they're very high strong, especially you Leos, you Leos. I see so many Leos that are, um, I'm like, you're going to give yourself a heart attack. Like you gotta you have to breathe. Cause they breathe. <laughs> so much but it's like you can still care and just try to think instead of feel and like feel the process of like finding the solution versus blowing up that would yeah. be my to someone with a lot of fire in their chart i'm over yeah. here trying to care you guys need to act like you <laughs> <can pass. laughs> balance <laughs> balance balance is the key yeah. And also channeling, if you get that like buildup of that fire sign, like energy, and you don't know what to do with this much energy. Um, exercising it out is a good, a good way to like transmute that energy quickly. Mm -hmm. Quickly. Yes. For fire signs, you know, they, they need to get that movement out. <clears throat> like if it were an earth sign or a water sign, I would say, read a book, yeah. you know, Eight. you're going to be fine. Fire. Yes. Run. Do a kickboxing class. Yes. You no, know, I just feel like that's a great way for yeah. to get all of those frustrations and feelings. And I have one of my old bosses. She's a Pisces. So you think like, oh, okay, she's chill. And she is really chill. But she has a first house stellium. She has her sun, her Mercury, I think wow. her V and her Mars. She has so many first house placements that she literally works out three times a week. And she's like, if I didn't work out, somebody would die. And, and instantly, I just know her sun sign at this point. And I'm like, that's not very Pisces like of you. So I pull her chart. I'm like, I need to, I need to know your birth time. Like, who am I working for right now? And so I pull her chart and I see this. Who am I working for? <laughs> You're going to kill me in my sleep. Because, you know, Pisces, they're, they're the sly ones that no one really expects to be the murderer. But low key, a little crazy in there. But so I checked her chart out first house all day long and I was just like that makes so much sense to me because I was like I don't really see Pisces dwelling on things like that and so yeah we we did a chart and working out was the best thing for her to get all that energy out to get those frustrations out property management is not for the week okay I'll tell you that it's no. not it so if you're not taking kicks kickboxing classes and you have a lot of fire in your chart you should consider it I definitely, I took kickboxing in college. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> and, love that. Yeah, Leo Rising. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, oddly enough. Um, one of the things, what was I just going to mention? And it just went away. I was like, kickboxing, I know that. <laughs> oh, that's what I was going to say. So um, basically when you're looking at a birth chart, it's so important to like look at the entire thing, not just your son. And now if people are starting to get more like. I um, love it. I'm so they're big and yes their people are like oh okay sun moon rising those are your big threes so now we're getting more involved in um like the broad astrology that everyone's talking about mm -hmm. but what you really have to think about is when you're looking at the entire circle you have to look at your not just um the signs that's just one small aspect that's one, like one third let's say on probably even less than that one third, then your houses are going to be a third of that. And then like the planets that are ruling your houses. And so it's just a bigger the overview. Reason. You have yes. zero degree. baby, you have so much learning to do. Like I love when I see your zero degrees in a chart, especially in fire, because I know that there's a little short fuse there. I'm yeah. like, Ooh, you have a very short fuse. Let's talk about this. And so, yeah, yeah. I just want to say that I'm 
so proud of like how far we've come because I've been studying astrology for 20 years and I would, you know, I, I used to do astrology before you could go online and get a birth chart. You had to, there was a, there's a paper, there's a book and you have to line everything up with when they were born and go through and highlight on everybody's different, you know, planets and the houses. And it was, it was a lot of work, but I had a lot of free time because I was a teenager and I didn't have anything else to do. So I was like, oh, this is really cool. And so to see how far people have come and how much education they've really seeked. And I'm just like, it's incredible because people, I feel like even like five years ago, didn't know what their mark was or like, oh, the first house, I have no idea. Not that everyone knows everything, but they're aware of it now. So yeah, finally, it makes birth chart readings so much better. It does. And also like you, we were talking about like looking at someone's chart and then being like, okay, well, if their moon is this, I won't be coming at them with an aggressive, aggressive energy. They're going to be more receptive with this other type of energy. And so it's just really helps you learn and understand people and how to communicate with them and what they need, even if they're still like figuring it out, just mm -hmm. getting that quick picture of the birth chart. It just gives you some really, it's nice for your co coworkers, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> the very least your co-workers yeah. my husband moon i cannot yell at him ever and i don't i'm not a yeller again i don't react but i, I sometimes i'm like bah, you know and then i'm like well i have to take it back because i know that there's a sensitivity there there's a wanting to please people there there's a people pleasing and how that makes that person feel i'm like man so you know <laughs> it's helpful i promise working with yeah. people and if you work with someone with a lot of fire in their chart like for me like i give them a little grace right because i'm like they feel so passionately i can't understand or relate to them but i know that it's just kind of who they are and just understanding that you know is kind of nice and a good thing to have especially with working with multiple people and a lot of people yeah Especially looking at it with uh, non-judgment and just observing because that helps you just also, everyone's different, you know, and some people can't help that they have a huge fire imbalance and that they're always in chaos mode and fight or flight. You know, so nice. <laughs> <laughs> the understanding and seeing it, you're like, oh, okay. It gives you just a different sense of patience for someone sometimes, at least in yeah. my experience. No, it absolutely does. And I say that when I say like they get, they feel so much it's it's different than water right like fire they feel and they're like ah, water fills and they cry that's the difference between like a fire and a water they both i would say equally feel their delivery on how they're feeling a thousand percent different yeah and i would also be um say use caution when dealing with a fire sign that's overstimulated and unhealed in that aspect because they can be like volcanoes just it just builds up and like sits at the top and it's might just be the one next thing that sends it over and it's not pretty it's no. that's why people are scared of them sometimes <laughs> i'll go back to they can light up a city or yes. they will burn firsthand they are so nice and lovely and amazing to be around they'll have your back they will, you know, tell you how it is, but on the other receiving end of that, they will destroy everything and they won't even care. Like I've seen so many times, I see it the most, honestly, with an Aries, um, Mars, but they destroy everything around them. It's like those people, have you ever met people that like take things and they throw them? I, I don't understand that. I've never reacted in my life, like picking something up and throwing. It's just not in me. It's not, <laughs> but people do that. And I'm like, you just broke your... Eight hundred dollar, well, a twelve hundred dollar phone. Like, yeah. you feel, I'm upset. I'm truly upset. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, I dated a few fire signs, and I was like, this is not for me. My oh. practicalness is just like, no, why? Would, like, it's your own thing you're destroying. But that's why those rooms, like axe throwing and the break rooms, are oh. fantastic for fire signs. Yes, a hundred percent. They contain safe area. <laughs> <laughs> Be chaotic, crazy, and a hot mess in this confined space yeah. with it <laughs> sounds so scary to me <laughs> <laughs> but you know, a break room in salt lake it's kind of crazy actually it's pretty fun we should do like a team building event there one the of our new moons yes that could be fun <laughs> yes channel leo. our fire signs leo will be summertime that might be a fun indoor activity mm. where it's
I love this idea. That could be so, you can bring your own stuff and they give you discounts. So if you got any things from your ex that you don't want anymore. <laughs> <it's time. laughs> yeah. You want to break and smash. Where are the <laughs> signs? Just bring them all. <laughs> yeah. Why not? <laughs> Excuse me. Love um, it. Well, I don't see any questions. If anyone's on, you have questions, this would probably be the best time to ask because we've got minutes and we do have some things we need to go over. So um, if you can think of anything, ask away. If not, we'll just continue to ramble on about <laughs> clients throwing their, their special belongings and causing <laughs> financial burdens on themselves. But, you know, <laughs> I actually have my sister's an Aries and she's a Pisces moon. Oh. He is like a little kid, like inside, right? Internally, she's this little kid. But on the outside, she's like this fierce, like, wow, like warrior woman, right? It's just, this, it's so interesting to see. It is, there's a huge imbalance there because wow. she's fiery, she's one way, she's who she is. But like her feelings are so like, I tip so I'm like, okay, how am I going to word this in a way that's not going to upset her? Yeah. And so it's kind of like, having a lot of fire friends i find myself personally not necessarily tiptoeing but depending on what their moons are and what element we've got there yeah. you know under them can be very different my old assistant was a leo with a pisces moon as well and very intuitive she was she was always on spot with things that's when you say that i'm like yeah they don't get enough credit for their being intuitive but um I don't know. I really enjoy having fire, fire, sun girlfriends. I feel like they yeah. bring this dynamic to a friendship and a group of friends that's fun. Never and boring. No, 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 no. We're quiet, Give, really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they, they're nice. I, you have like a group of earthy girls. Although I, I think earth signs get downplayed too. It's like fire gets downplayed with intuition. Earth gets downplayed with like how fun they are. Yeah. I, I they're agree. Wild. They're pretty Earth wild. signs need to be in a safe container so that they can release those things. So for my 40th birthday, we went to Mexico and we were like, I think there was like eight or 10 of us. And we realized everyone was an earth sign except for one person that we had our like token Aries. <laughs> and she was the one at three in the morning making everyone quesadillas because we were tired. <laughs> But we would all take turns like being in charge and the there was never any food waste. Everyone was always on time. It was like very practical. And I'm like, we should do Zodiac birthdays because then you can choose. You're like, well, I don't think I really want to like go to the Leo birthday. I don't think I can handle that. You know what I mean? You know, it would be a lot more or yeah, I'm just it's just a different way to do birthdays. Yeah, no, I like that. And you could I mean, you would think of like each theme too, right? Like Aries would probably be something very active. Taurus. There's going to be snacks. <laughs> and nap time. <laughs> yeah, nap time and snacks. Gemini is probably going to be something fun and interesting, intriguing. Intriguing, yeah. Intellectual with activity, probably. Yes, yeah. I just, I don't know if I'd want to go to a Libra birthday party. I a love Libra my birthday party, yeah. And I love it, but I'm like, I just, we're just not that, we're just chilling. We're not as fun. I just don't feel like I haven't had a fun Libra girlfriend. I'm not very fun. No, just, that's not true. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm like, so like, whatever you guys want to do is fine. Like making a decision on what we're going to do would be like the biggest, hardest thing for a Libra group. Like, I don't care. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah. Libras are like a little more indecisive. I've noticed. Oh yeah. We're very much that way. Um... I'm trying to, oh. oh. Yeah, Cafe Astrology is a nice one because it actually, you put in your birth time and it goes through like kind of how a reading would be. Um, it's like a vague, a vague reading. You're getting it done and like it's an AI generated thing, but it's pretty, it's pretty spot on. And astro.com, it helps you start learning where, um, how to start looking at an actual chart and then learning the transits and the aspects and things. So that astro.com is beautiful. And you can put in everyone that you know, um, my cat. Um, you can put in like all of your friends and family and click it and then you can compare charts. But also in astro.com, it's pretty cool at the very top. 
there's like a little sun and uh, moon sig sigil and you can press that and it shows you exactly in your location right now what the planets are doing and then you can compare that to your chart to see how that's working for you so yeah it's kind of a it's a cool cool tool and it's free it's great yeah and it's so great to have and use and put in your back pocket and just kind of know yeah so. absolutely absolutely does anybody I'm else have any joking. questions let's see, let's see what is. and we'll be going through we try to i mean i try to stay on topic as much as possible but it's hard sometimes when we're trying to like cover where in the chart it does what and just kind of bringing up different things just for general knowledge but i mean like next week she said we'll be doing earth and then we'll be doing air and then water and then we'll be going into like the signs and probably houses we haven't we don't have this all organized yet so don't quote me in this direct order but we'll be going over things each week that you know you can go and have your chart ready and just kind of look and say oh they're talking about mars and that's action okay well mine is in virgo and then you can kind of read characteristics of virgo and be like practical orderly and you're like okay that kind of explains because i don't jump into things i want to step back and think about it so it's always good to just have your chart and have everything so that when we are talking about it and if we need to slow down you can pipe in and just say hey can you guys talk slower because i sometimes <laughs> man i'm talking really fast a lot of coffee especially with coffee <laughs> yeah i'm literally <laughs> doing so anyways just know that yeah. like it it's helpful to have your planets your houses and then you can kind of relate and whatever we may say something that you can't find online because we have been studying this you know for a long time really studying real time and just diving in deep i've been studying for 20 years so there's things that you know we may say that you can't find or you can just kind of relate more to what we're saying versus what you're finding on the internet so it's just good to have for yeah, the you can your questions in the comments yeah <clears throat> we'll to answer them yeah, perfect. And also, um, L, if if anyone needs a birth chart reading or for your friends or family, L does full birth chart readings, and her Instagram is up at the very top when you scroll through the comments. Um, so y'all can just reach out to her, which is always yeah. nice. We'll do your birth chart. You can do comparison chart. Um, all the things. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, and then I'm trying to think what else um, we we talked about the Patreon. We talked about like and subscribe. Um, and then teachers. Yeah. So we want to do more events like this and start getting, um, the community more involved. And so if anyone has any topics that they're like passionate about, just message, uh, one of either me, Megan or Elle. And, um, yeah, it'd be amazing to add more aspects to these little coffee, coffee dates together. Invite your friends. Yeah. This is the first one we were like nervous, like, um, what are we? Make sure we say everything. So I don't know if you have questions or like she said, anything you guys want to talk about. We I'm down. I'm open to talking about anything. So you could talk about astrology all day long, all day. I do for people in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I do lashes. Do is talk about their sign and what they should be doing with their life. Like, oh, you're North Node. Some people enjoy it. Some people are like, I just wanted to like take a nap, lady. This is. <laughs> I'm I don't want to hear about myself. Um, I know. I know. Like, why did she keep talking? <laughs> yesterday, I'm sorry if you're listening. I, I invited her to this. <laughs> sorry I talked your ear off and you wanted to know. I mean, that sounds like a pretty good day. Like, just sit there and get your lashes done and tell me about myself. Like, yes. <laughs> I would, I would like, I would have loved this. And I, most people do. There's only a few that I can tell that are like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. No, no questions, no. So I'm like, okay. Nothing to add. No. Nope. So it's fine. It's fine. But if, um, I don't think anyone has questions about fire because there's not any in the little box, but. We did such a good job explaining it. Yeah, <laughs> we went through everything. <laughs> it was <laughs> we're, we're asking everyone's birthdays now and, and seeing and, and having compassion for people that are so, so much fire in their chart. I do feel bad for people that have been involved and that do have a lot of fire because you can see it burning literally inside of them. They turn red. I mean, yeah. That's, that's passion. Yeah. It's a physical, it's a physical thing you can see. The, the chest too is like always oh. red. 
I, yeah. I can't wait to get to a Gemini moons when we go over Gemini moons. Ooh, I can't wait to do that either. Those are the ones I'm passion for. So sorry, I don't know who's trying to call me right now. I'm right in the middle of this. Okay. Oh <laughs> it was a Gemini moon. <laughs> yeah. They're like, did, did you say something? <laughs> <laughs> that nervous, you know. I really do have probably one of the most more compassion for Gemini and Aquarius moons than any other moon because it's just a hard spot to have emotions, to have feels for two planets that don't like to feel. They think they think, you know. So it's it's a hard spot for them. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I got a lot of Aquarius in my chart. I can relate to them. Mm-hmm. Aquarius, I, I. I know it's a fire trait to react, but I find Aquarius moons are the most impractical reactors. Are the most what? And, like they react so fiery like. I'd say it's very close to the element of fire. Mm. They don't. Um, are you an Aquarius moon? No, I'm a Libra going in uh, to Virgo, or Vir I'm a zero moon. <laughs> oh, you're a baby moon. You're learning. Zero Libra, yeah. I love that. Well, <laughs> Aquariuses are typically, they react just without thinking, or it's it's almost like like my daughter's an Aquarius moon. Mm. And I'll, I need you to do this. What? <laughs> like, it's so, so much. And I'm just, and I've noticed it with every time I know someone's an Aquarius moon, they they react, they retract later, but they, they're very reactive very fiery we almost say that they have like an essence of fire in there it's air it's not but it's i just find the placement of the air in that moon sector hmm. hard yeah challenging. a very challenging aspect yeah wow so well do we have you did the announcements you've got yeah, all the things it. okay that's it Thank you guys for all showing up today. It was so, so fun. And now we got our first one out of the way. We're basically professionals. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a lot to get me out of bed before, you know, anytime really, especially if it's raining. <laughs> yeah. Well, and next week we're doing it at nine again, but that is tentative after that when we will have, we'll have a set date and time. We're just kind of playing with times and dates right now to kind of figure out what works best yeah. for us. schedules. Some of us have newborns and school and travel and yeah. so on. So. so stay tuned. We'll be here though. We'll be here every week. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm excited about this. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Elle. And thank you, Megan, for setting all of this up. It looks amazing. Um, Megan's been working behind the scenes and all of our tech stuff and building all these platforms, which is so beyond my like realm of expertise. I couldn't even... Couldn't even. <laughs> so this is yeah. awesome. Um, and then last thing to mention is if you're around on Sunday, we're going to be at Fitz Park, 2 p.m. Um, bring a chair, some shareable snacks and whatnot. And uh, yeah, I think. I'm bringing croquet, croquet, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, we're going to, I'm going to see about singing bowls. It depends on my surgery hand, but yeah, it's, I think Sunday is going to be super fun. Okay. Yay. And people can bring dogs. That's a big one. All right. Awesome. Well, you guys all have an amazing day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Bye.